Hello there, welcome to this quick video on two, on well, four exercises really f uh, for brain breaking and hand independence. People like those, so I've uh, sort of come up with a little variation on a simple theme to help you with that. You're not going to like it, it's very, very hard, but I promise it's possible if you actually don't do it slowly, but just go straight into doing it quickly. Make sure your right hand can do this, it can alternate on the first five notes of any major scale. That's the idea. And then also your left hand, by the way, ascending and descending. So if, try to make sure your right hand can do this as well, because you're going to do all the variations. And the left hand, of course, descending. So this is already quite challenging, but just make it really, really try to do it. You don't have to do it as quick as this. It's a really great technique if you want to play the piano, and I guess that's why you're here. So, so get that into the left hand as well, and the right hand. Now, the idea is that when one hand is alternating, it feels like six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the left hand, or the other hand, is always going to feel like eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you put those together, it becomes asynchronous, and it's horrible. So you're not going to like this, but I really hope you try it. The idea is that you put them together. It's only possible if you don't think about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you only feel the pulse of the right of the alternating hand, so it's going to start on the second note, which is like one. It's like and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, like that. And you bring in the left hand on the second. So it goes something like this. This is the first idea. I'll give you a couple of variations. times you'll, you can stop where you want of course but I think that was four times you end on the E and the D in the right hand oh, that kind of sounds quite nice and then of course the left hand alternating but let's try it descending from the thumb top five notes of a major scale and then the right hand just doing this Not as easy as I make it look, but do, 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 do try. And then I thought, okay, let's just try it with uh, maybe just two fingers alternating, but an octave in the left hand. So uh, let's uh, maybe begin with the right hand doing maybe, I don't know, uh, 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 riddle, uh, ring finger and thumb, for example. I mean, anything. I haven't just practiced these ones only. I'm just randomly saying an example. Ring finger and thumb. See, again, it's not so much about the fingering, it's actually about the timing that makes it hard, because your, your, your hands are not synchronised, and that's important when you're playing the piano, because nothing is really synchronised. So the idea is you're going to go octaves in the left hand, like this in the right hand, and you start on the second note. Like that, and we just do it one more time. quite fun and then of course the left hand so maybe middle finger did I do yeah, middle finger this time and thumb maybe yeah my, my index can't reach so let's just try thumb here you get that laid down and if you can do it in one key you can do it in another key it just takes maybe a, a 30 seconds to a minute to just get familiar with the new position uh, F sharp for example I don't know why I did that but just for example for the first one It doesn't really matter what you know, fingering you're using, no, what key you're in, I mean. Uh, so, uh, left hand was going to be middle and thumb, but, the, but octaves in the right hand this time. Did I got to G there? So it's quite difficult, you see, because uh, you're not synchronised. That's why this is a brain-breaking exercise. That is quite challenging. Um, so I just recommend that you just try all those variations, try different fingerings, and try different keys, and uh, and it, you know it's going to be quite interesting. Just just I'll just give you one little example, maybe in the key of um, I don't know B, for example. So the first one, you can use random fingering as well, of course, but try to use all five. So this is going to be. So here we've got a very interesting fingering here with the F sharp, the E and the D sharp. So we have a new a new sort of not challenge, but a new experience, let's say. And you could even make the left hand just go up, you know, in octaves, perhaps. So is there enough space for that? Yeah, I won't, I won't cross over. Okay, so it'd be something like... Yeah. So you need to get your fingering right. So let's just uh, see how it goes. I need to feel it myself, because I haven't done it before in this key like this.
that's the idea. Try it in different keys, all these oh. combinations, and uh, it's hard, but I think that you're going to get some nice uh, finger independence. My fingers are kind of tingling after doing this for the last sort of half an hour in different keys. And when I really started it, I could not do it. I was uh, like, um, like my right hand was maybe du duplicating on the D because it starts on the C in the left hand, for example, and the D is already being played. So it's like, like you're one, you're one finger ahead on the right hand. So in the beginning, I was playing C and D, C and D twice, just so my hands synchronized. It was kind of doing that. So they could follow each other, you know, but it's, you're not allowed to do that. That's why it's good to start on a different note. So th th that's the idea. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy that. It's actually quite challenging and maybe share your feedback and uh, progress in the comments below. As always, likes, comments, subscribers are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Waterpillism, Syllabus and all the other goodies. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye for now.